our Welcome Six scale, it's October 28th. Um, the link to the documents in the chat. Um, feel free to add agenda items and yourself as an attendee, please. Okay, uh, we'll start with the first item. Um, so the periodic job threshold. Um, so this, um, I, I think, so we did, oh, actually, before, before we start on the first item. So last week we didn't, um, I canceled, we didn't, um, we didn't have uh, too many items to discuss. And um, so I figured, and plus we didn't have a lot of attendance. So I figured we'll push to this week. Um, so um, the this item, the first item here, the periodic job threshold. So I don't know if there's been an update on this um, since uh, I think we originally talked about two weeks ago, but um, I wanted to, if, if has there been any change with this? And if not, um, I just want to get some work items and kind of what can be done and um, to get us to work and I can take it if, if not. I don't think there has been. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like that's partly my responsibility. I have not gotten to it. So the, the paths forward, if you want to write down action items are, we have to just right. build that perf audit tool. Um, and uh, we probably want to gather results with it, which should be once it's actually built, it, we should start getting results posted to an artifact that could already exist today. So we'll see the uh, periodic run, hopefully successfully. We'll see thresholds, um, sorry, we won't see thresholds, we'll see profile results. And based on a collection of those, like if we see it run for a few days or whatever, we could probably start saying thresholds, which would then alert us when things uh, regress. And that's probably what we're wanting to do over time. Okay. Um, and then this, so talking about this, this building the perf audit tool, um, like, does this just need to be like, um, um, like this just needs to be added to like the, um, the path in the make file for build or something, or is this like a specific path that needs to go into? I, I think it just needs to be built like, um, I think that it's going to end up in the expected path that the automation's looking for if it just gets built. Okay, so you have so you have code that's gonna like that's trying to call it right now, is it? And then it just needs yeah. to, it's just not there. Okay. Yeah, I, I can show you here. I'll grab that PR for you real quick because it's already been merged, uh, and that'll give you an idea of exactly what code exists to to execute perf audit and why it doesn't work. Find it. Posted in the I'm looking my thousand tabs, find the right one. No. Nope. Oh my gosh, I might have to open another one. Sorry, I gotta find this document again. Can you? I'm sorry. Can you post it to the chat again? It's not in my history. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me do it again. Sure. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought the um. Oh, okay. I thought it would show all the history. Okay, there, there we go. All right. So if you if I was saying I, I was talking like the, the everyone could see the document in chat. I I thought I, everyone could see the history. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. So if you look at that PR and just the, the one code change I had there, um, you see that I'm just creating a start time, a stop time, and then executing the perf audit tool to gather results. And that perf audit function um, on line 64, uh, we expect to find the tool in that directory and it's just not found. So it's either not being built or it's in a different directory. That's all that okay. needs to be investigated. And, uh, okay. All right. I can, all right. I guess that gives me enough to go on. Okay. And then, um, all right. I'm not going to find who to like, what to do with this periodic job and, and test it. Okay. That gives me enough. All right. Perfect. All right. So next week, I'm hoping that, you know, so I can, if I can solve this in, in time, I'm hoping next week we can get some start getting on these, getting these thresholds and we can start making some decisions as to, uh, 
where we stand and uh, perhaps start looking at um, different ways we can gate around those thresholds. Okay. Sounds like a great start. And we can also talk about more metrics collection and things like that. So once we get all this wired up, uh, we can do a lot of cool stuff. It's just, yep. We take yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know once we get the, yeah. And then um, I'm hoping that I, as part of this, I'm gonna learn a lot about this periodic job and um, like when it runs, like I don't know anything about it. Like when it runs, oh, I can like all this stuff. Do you stuff want the config for it? I can, I can link you to that real quick. Yeah, if you have any information that will help me get started until like this job, that'd be good. Cause then eventually I'm, I'm hoping like when I learn a little bit more about it, I can share with everyone here and then we can all find ways to contribute to um, to uh, different tests of this job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me let me give you the file path to the actual config of the prowl. Oh, wow, this is way more involved than I thought it was going to be. Just looking at what was done. Uh, if you want, I get, um, what's the repo? We get repo and I can look around in there or whatever. Or uh, it's Project the Infra. Uh, OK. Here's the chat. Uh, and I'm, I mean, I would look through what Marcelo has committed. Um, as far as pull requests go. Okay. Uh, the actual periodic shouldn't be hard to find. I, it's just always a matter of going through uh, so many nested layers of directories. Okay. I'll, I'll, so I'll look through it. I'll see what I can figure out with uh, that. That'll give me enough to go on. Okay. All right. Thanks, David. All right. Um, I think we're good on this topic. Um, let's go to the second bullet point. So I, this actually segues off what you're saying, David. So additional um, audit tool measurements. So I was um, uh, some background on this. I, I was looking at, um, I was looking around, uh, actually doing some some tracing work and uh, looking at an issue, and I found a bunch of interesting things, um, different ways that we can actually measure. Uh, the, some of the, the times. And um, these are all things that actually I think would fit just fine in the audit tool. So this is what I came up with. Um, right now they, we, we, so we can, we can see the scheduling to scheduled transition latency. We can measure that and we can, we've got in our metrics. Um, but there's also some things that we can actually get off the objects um to that tells us some other things like uh, latency between when the pods are ready and the vmi object transitions to scheduled um, we can actually see on um uh the pod when the containers go to ready it's in the it's actually in the conditions there it's in the status and then um we can also see when the vmi object transition is scheduled um so we can actually start putting some more some more um data points down. There's also like latency between the vert launcher pods being assigned to a node to the creation timestamp. Um, this is on the pod. Um, we can see like when um, the network's assigned, uh, like the node name is actually filled in. There's a timestamp that's that's put there. Um, and we obviously have the, tra the creation timestamp. Um, there's the vert launcher pods being uh, assigned a network. Um, if you have some sort of network plugin, when those get laid down. Um, that's also there. Um, we could, if we, if there are pod as PVCs, we could actually look and see um, the PVC that is being allocated. We can look at the PVC and see the work that was done on the PVC. Um, and all these metrics I, I saw that, that are there are actually part of the, the server side apply work um, that went in. There's all this, um, there's all this stuff that, uh, that has timestamps around who is updating what fields and when, and we can actually examine it um, to provide some more information here. And I'm, I'm thinking it goes in the audit tool, 
this is what I'm thinking, is that we can actually find, we could take the breakdown even further to these things, which I would be really interested in, in seeing because when I look at the, right now, when I look at scheduling to schedule, um, I can see the time and, um, and it'd actually be nice to see like even more like what went into, um, you know, the scheduling to schedule phase because it's, it's actually not Hubert that's, that's, that's causing like what, what we're seeing here. It's some, it's other things that are going on. What do people think about these? Uh, are there any, any thoughts about this? Like, is that, so, does that make sense to people? Yeah. Everything you're saying makes total sense to me. Uh, how are you, this latency, um, is it exposed today in metrics? This latency, um, the, the four, I don't you, think so. Okay. No, like, you mean like in, um, like in either in Qbert or in Kubernetes in some way? Is that what you're asking? Right. Right. Do we have a, I guess a way of, um, detecting this today, even if it's complex, do we have a way of determining that this has occurred retroactively? Retroactively, um, like, yeah, so it, it's on the actual objects, it's on the YAMLs. We could, so so I'm, what way I'm interesting this here is, is if um, the audit tool can go through and look at the YAMLs, the VMI YAMLs, and just kind of look through a bunch of them, uh, crawl through a bunch of them and, and dig up this information uh, after, you know, it's a pod, after the VMI is running, for example. But we could do metrics on this too. Uh, that, 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 might be possible because these are also events. Hmm. So yeah, this like brings up a good point. Uh, the audit tool today is meant, well, we've designed it to run retroactively. There's no reason why we can't run it during the test as well and have it watch for some things and then uh, calculate when it's being terminated to calculate all the, the metrics over that time span. Uh, we just aren't doing that today. So, well, I wasn't, we find, thinking, I wasn't yeah. thinking necessarily watch. Like, I wasn't sorry to interrupt you. I wasn't thinking that necessarily it would watch. Like, it, this can be all done retroactively. Um, just to clarify, like this can be, but like you're saying, it's they, they aren't metrics today. So it wouldn't. It would be a little bit different than what the audit tool is currently doing. But maybe Only it's if the objects metrics. still exist. So the yeah, objects, but, uh, yeah. isn't that our assumption though, or maybe? Uh, run in or? How do you stop it? The problem, like, if we're measuring um, time for shutting down a VMI or something like that, I don't know. Anytime we delete the object, then we lose all that data. So if we're we're expecting the VMI to exist at the end of the test for us to introspect it, uh, if the test does anything where it cycles VMIs, then we we don't have that data. Right, but the so the metrics. Um, let's say we delete the VMIs and then we parse the metrics again. Aren't they gone? Metrics stick around for the. Uh, okay, uh, just, so we have they stick around forever. I mean, there's a there's a peer. I mean, that's just the database. Oh, right. Religious. They go into the database and they get, right. I see. I see. So I see. maybe after seven days or something, they start getting purged, um, but they're going to be around certainly longer than our load test. Yeah, you're right. Okay. These could be metrics. Um, I mean, do, well, what's, I mean, I kind of, maybe we go down that path. Like, does, do we, would we ever like see I, mean, I see value, but we have do, do would it make sense that we measure this kind of thing inside of Qbert? That we, I mean, I think we can. The events are there, and the objects are there. They're being updated. We could see them. We're, we're already watching them. And we so just this is giving us them. a more fine granular understanding of what's happening between VMI transitions. So right now we have scheduling, or schedule scheduling the scheduled, and then. Uh, these latencies will give us like more fidelity between those and same thing with scheduling to running and things like that. Uh, I think the question to me is, do we need that fidelity yet? Like if we, if we find that we need a very specific understanding of certain latencies, uh, that's more than the, like the fine buck or the, the kind of large buckets that we have today, then that's when I would start looking at, uh, at these. The PPC allocation is yeah. interesting to me. Yeah, that was so. The, the reason this came about was because I was 
I was specifically trying to diagnose an issue between scheduling and scheduled, and I didn't know what it was. Um, that's kind of the background here, and, and that, ah. and that's kind of why I got into tracing to figure it out. And it, and through tracing, I completely eliminated Hubert's work queue. It was not, it was nothing to do with the vertical controller. It was everything to do with. It was actually specifically to do with with PVCs, and um, and that was interesting. Is that what I found what I actually found is that Hubert's work queue is is executing uh, pretty fast. I mean, it's it's almost instantaneously. And but I wouldn't when I when I actually look at this this transition, the Hubert's work queue or the work that Hubert's doing is tiny in this mm. transition, and it's and it's kind of given the maybe it's given the wrong impression. If you don't know that, it's it's giving the wrong impression. I think I would expect that. So scheduling means that we posted the pod and scheduled means that everything between scheduling and scheduled, my expectation is that's all Kubernetes because that's all uh, just making the pod run somewhere. And as soon as we see it running, we're just setting it to schedule, but we aren't doing anything between that time span. Yeah, I mean, it, it, makes, it makes sense to me. Like, it, like right, we're, we have pods going and pods are impending. They go to like just the pods are coming up during that time. That's the majority of the work. Um, but it was helpful because I actually discovered an issue in the process that I found that specifically with PVCs ended up being the case. And there's also some other things I found, like the, the amount of time, even network assignment, node assignment, um, these things seem to be um these were helpful to know um and this and that was the other thing is like there so i looked at other metrics for example scheduling the scheduler has a an end-to-end -end pod time um which was helpful and that it could like it it gave roughly a gauge of of what to expect in in the times but it also didn't talk about like what it was like what what is going into this um, like specifically to me, like I was interested in the, in the PVC time, which ended up being really slow. How did you figure it out? What was the ultimate, like, how did you ultimately see or gain visibility into that? What ended up happening. So it, basically what I did is I went through the scheduler, I, the scheduler logs and noticed that the, the time it took for PVC to be, um, to be allocated and, and a note assigned was was very long, um, and then found out there were a lot of PVCs, a lot more than expected, um, that were just sitting around and not they weren't doing anything. And the scheduler, kind of looking in the code, it's it's looping through PVCs that are that it could attach, and there were just so many that it was taking so long. Interesting. So the way I would approach this is we want um, what we're looking for specifically with scheduling to scheduled is to understand how long the Kubernetes part is taking, like what what's happening at the Kubernetes scheduling layer. So I would investigate if there are any metrics related to the Kubernetes scheduler that we can start introspecting and add that to the uh, perf audit tool to give us more understanding. But here's also the thing. Um, if it's outside of kubevert, uh, I think it's important that we, I guess it is important we know about it, but it's not necessarily a regression uh, on our part. It's something I guess we'd have to take to the Kubernetes community. I guess it's still important to know, okay. Yeah, I, and, I, and I think the reason, like some of my reasoning is that like, you know, we, we've talked about some of the more thresholds here. Um, like it would be, these are the kinds of things like when here we're expecting how whatever Kubernetes is performance to be um and like there's that pod scheduling time that metric that i mentioned from the scheduler i think that's a that's a big factor that was that was pretty well correlated to this time um yeah i mean and then you know any of these other ones would could just be i don't know things that are that could we could additionally see value in um, I think like some of the others, like maybe, you know, if PVCs aren't one, I think some of the ones that at least would be interesting are the, um, what's the, uh, this one here, like the, when pods go ready to when the BMI object is 
switches to scheduled since that's the last step that we do um we want we expect that's that's in our control and that's one that we expect to be um to be really fast but there could be i mean sometimes it takes a second i've seen in some cases it takes many seconds this would also be useful to know and this is actually i think one of the original reasons behind qps was the qps change was this one this gap was a little bit larger but this is this was um i know this one could be another one that we could use but anyway i i think like what you said maybe start with the cube scheduler metrics as a as a first step on this might be an easy on ramp yep makes sense okay Okay, um, next topic. Uh, so tracing, so I had mentioned previously, um, I was doing some tracing. Um, I'm kind of looking for some ideas from, from folks and opinions. The, um, there's some work in the community around this and I don't know how far we want to go with this, but um, there's also a fairly simple library that is really handy to make tracing work. But um, I don't know, I don't know. I think to me, my thought on this is that we can use this library that all it does is it just takes, we wrap commands or like wrap, I don't know, a bunch of areas with traces and if they take over some threshold, then we, we spit it out into the log um, as an easy first step. And then maybe this could be something that we could look at later but i i don't know i think what do people think i mean this, this i don't know this seemed seemed the easiest way to start i'm not that familiar with tracing though or what kubernetes is doing i don't know if anyone else is i think that we'd want to understand how mature this tool is like our are other projects using it and the Kubernetes ecosystem. I'm a little leery of anything that involves code changes, like a, a new package and installing, like, like sprinkling these things throughout the code until we are really sure that we want to commit to something like this because it becomes kind of a potential burden on us in the future. Um, it's an interesting idea, and I think that it has value. Uh, again, it's just all if we're willing to commit to something like this. I mean, nothing's permanent. It's not like it's a feature that it, we'd be supporting or anything like that. We could take it out at any time, but still, you know, it's work. Yeah. Um, I think we already include details. And yeah, I think it's our, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's a vendor. I didn't have to add it. It was already there. It's just, oh, um, wow. yeah, it just. So this is, wait, this is part it. of the Kubernetes utils package, the tracing? Yeah. Oh. That's what I used, yeah. Uh, I have a lot less reservations if it's, yeah, part of the ecosystem like that. Yeah, the functions and everything and the abstractions are there. We basically just, we basically just need to put them in the right places, which is also another question that's, that I, I want to get some opinions on because so let, let's say that let's say that this makes sense um where would where would we want to add tracing because um i've got i've only got one i have one listed here i've got control plane work use but what are some other ideas i started small that, that makes sense <laughs> work use makes sense yeah uh, i'm curious how so if this is part of the kubernetes utils package is probably part of Kubernetes. I'm curious if it's used here. I can look at the Kubernetes. Yeah, I didn't, um, let me see my patch I did. I don't think I had to import anything. It was there. Do you have a sample name of the function or anything like that that I could grab uh, the Kubernetes repo with real quick? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's already it was already there. Um, so it's um, 
just look for trace uh, or start trace or step trace. Tracer, what's a tracer? Let's say, uh, here, I'll just look for trace. Yeah. It's in utils, uh, Kubernetes utils trace. Yeah. Yeah, it's being used in the scheduler, which is a great spot for it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So what do you, all right, so what do people think about like uh, some, where do, where do people want traces? Cause like, I could do a, I'll do I could do a few of these. I mean, the work you seem to make sense to me, uh, in, in in a different way than I was doing it before. Because I think the mistake I was making before is I was measuring time between keys, which is actually was measuring the time it took for Kubernetes to to do. It was measuring Kubernetes work. It wasn't actually measuring the time that the work they were doing. So like the just the work in the queue or the, the work like in that update function would work and then maybe like probably on all of the all across the control plane is what I was thinking. What I'm most interested in is the VMI and the VM work queues uh, and BERT controller and BERT handler. So for example, if I look at BERT handler, that one's really interesting to me to understand that the VM has been queued and understand where we're spending the most time or performing work on that to the point where we return. So that would tell me that, uh, for example, let's say we are performing BERT handler work queue in a VM, and we get to the point where we're syncing the VM with BERT launcher, and I can tell that that function is taking like almost a second or something like that. And that would tell me that something's happening in BERT launcher that's causing this, this gRPC call to block for longer than I expected. Things like that would be like I have no visibility into that today, but tracing would allow us to to do that. So okay. we understand the whole reconciliation of a VM every time that a unit of work is done. And unit work meaning it's popped off the queue, the the VM it's popped off the queue and executed and then returned. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what I'll do is I'll do yeah. So that the right when it's popped off the queue, I'll do basically what I did here. It's like. Um, I'll start the, the the trace and I'll add a bunch of steps in there and then we can have a threshold for, I don't know what, I'll just play around with it and see what the, which I mean, maybe a second or something. I don't know what, what we expect, but some amount I'll throw in there as like the threshold to report it and we'll see what, we'll see what comes out of it. I don't know. We'll see what, I don't, we'll see if we can find what, what slow, slow is because I don't know. Sir. Uh, yeah, did you post your PR? I mean, I saw your code for some of this. Did you post it as a PR yet? Or is it no, like I'm going to redo it because um, like I was saying before, the the way I have it now isn't correct because it's actually measuring the time that we're waiting for Q, for events yeah. from Kubernetes. And that's okay. that was the that was the mistake that I was making is that it was I thought we were doing work or something during that time. It was not the case. We're actually just waiting for our informers to get work. Great, yeah, and just a really simple PR, maybe just do one trace with some steps in it, like pick one, like BERT handler is great, uh, BERT controller is fine, and the VMI or VM controller, uh, and then document like how to use it and everything, and that gives you like a precedent that we can add more afterwards. Yeah, makes sense, okay. Okay, um, that's all I had for topics. Do people have any other items we want to talk about? That's good. Unless anyone else has anything. I mean, it seems like the action items are we just need this periodic job to to start moving forward more and yeah, and tracing so will I'm definitely give us developer insight into how to. The tracing and the performance um, profiling, like uh, getting PPROF or whatever back, those are, are going to be our two primary tools, I think, in, um, in improving the, the results. 
Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm gonna do, I'll take this one. I've got the, and I'll do the tracing as well. This one in the middle, I'm gonna create an issue for, actually, I, I think I have, a, an, uh, I'll add it to this issue um, in the test framework as some ideas that we can look into. Um, I'll mention the scheduler metric in there. Um, and this is something that we can consider areas we can expand. Okay, cool. All right, if um, there's no other topics, I think we'll end early. All right, thank you, everybody. That's good. All right, bye. Thank you, bye.